You see, when we get to heaven, I want you to know we're not going to be up front. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to be way, way in the way, way in the back. That's right. There are people in these third world countries uh, around the world that have given their all and they live and depend upon God. They've given their lives. They've made sacrifices. They're going to be the ones who are up front. We, I, hey, I'm thankful that I'm going to be in, living in heaven, but we had it so good down here living our, our pushy, cushy life. Amen. I want you to know that's not what Christianity is all about. That's right. We've got to suffer some shame. Hebrews 12 and 12 says, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have to be willing to suffer shame. We don't want that. That's the cost of, of being a disciple. I know in America we, 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 we have this different idea. You know, when the church is, when we build a bigger church and we, we have all the nice this and the nice that, we're thinking, oh wow, yes, uh, God is on our side. We're doing everything right, man. There, there are a there, there are hundred and some, there are five hundred, there's a thousand people at our church. If Jesus would step before a crowd like that, uh, He's going to start preaching some things uh, that before too long, uh, you're going to have people getting up uh, and walking out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want you to know we're going to have to suffer some shame. I want you to know that there's going to come a time, uh, amen, when we will be ridiculed. It's happening all around the world. And I want you to know, if that was happening to us today, we would begin to... God, oh, why, why have You forsaken us? When we suffer for His glory, when we suffer, when we are persecuted, God has not forsaken us. That's right. Uh-oh. That's in here. We've got we've got a different picture about Christianity, brother Robin. We've got we've got a different uh, thought about what living for the Lord is all about. That's good stuff. I mean, it's it's the Lord's gonna bless me so much. I'm gonna be driving two BMWs. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, and I like the blessings, but I want you to know, God blesses the just. And the unjust. Yeah. So just because you got this and that doesn't mean that you're living right. He's doing that for the dirty, rotten sinners. Uh -oh. You see, Matthew 27 and 39 says, And they passed by, and they that passed by reviled Him, wagging their heads. Talking about Jesus. Look at him up there. Who is he? Who is he? You see, the cost is being rejected. 1 Peter 2 and 4 says, You're coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. You see, we think we're something when people choose us. But well, we think we're something uh, uh, if we're picked to do this or that. If our, our church is honored in a certain way in the community. I want you to know as much as I love this community and I care about the loss that is in this community, if they, don't, if they never honor us for, for anything that we do around here, I don't care. You see, because I don't want to fit in with the rest of the community. Because it's not about the worldly community. It's about being sold out to Jesus Christ. I want you to know this church shouldn't fit in with the rest of the churches. This church should stick out like a sore thumb when it comes to the rest of the churches. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean, people ought, they ought to know those people are sold out to Jesus Christ. He matters more to them than anything else in this world. Well, you see, uh, they're preaching a different gospel. They're, they're 
preaching and teaching a different way. No, we're preaching the biblical way. That's right. You know, when we sit down, amen, and, and, and rub shoulders with the other churches of this community, amen, they ought to know that what we preach and teach and live is totally different than what they preach and teach and live. Yes. Because it is. Second Peter. Oh, Lord. I'm going to read just a couple of verses for you. Acts 10 and 39 says, And we are witnesses of all things which He did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Amen. We're going to follow in the steps of Jesus Christ, and we have to follow Jesus each and every day. Jesus said in John 12 and 25, He that loveth His life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Well, you see, all the things that we're taught, all the things we teach our children, oh, you need to love yourself. Before you can love somebody else, you got to love yourself. You ever heard that before? Well, you got to love yourself. Hey, wait a minute. Jesus said, verse 26 says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, he, him will my Father honor. Luke 9 and 23, said, Jesus said unto them all, If any man will come unto, after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. There's one word after that word cross, and it starts with a D. Daily. daily. Take up your cross daily. Daily. You see, when I step out into this world, I shouldn't mix with the world. I shouldn't be hanging out at the places that the world hangs out. And if I do, I shouldn't look like them. I shouldn't walk like them. I shouldn't talk like them. My, my daughter and I stepped into an establishment not too long ago. When we stepped in there, the very first thing they did is a, uh, the, the waitress come over. We're, it's in another community. Uh, we sat down. Uh, uh, the first thing she asked us is, what church do you go to? She knows I'm a pastor. No. As pastorly as I may uh, express myself, it wasn't because of that. It's because my daughter walked in there with me. My daughter has long, uncut hair. My daughter looks like a lady everywhere she goes and in everything that she does. They wasn't, not because I'm so pastorly, I mean, the, the aura of God just exhumed from me as I walked into that restaurant. It wasn't that. It's because they saw a young lady who looked like a young lady. Amen. They could tell because of her. Amen. That there was something different. You see, we don't, we don't, we have a front. And it's not a front. It's on the outside and on the inside. See, my daughter went to school in the public school system for uh, all 13 years. Uh, she, when she got to high school, she was uh, uh, dubbed the skirt girl. That was her, that's how people knew her in, the, in her high school, the skirt girl. And to some, that would be a derogatory statement. Oh, they're picking on her. Oh, they're, they're this or they're that. Hey, folks, they knew every day when she walked into that school, she had a dress on. She looked like a lady. Y'all are getting quiet. Oh, my <laughs> Y'all, well, I don't, I, there have been young ladies in this church, some of them right now, that say, well, I don't, I don't want to be known as the skirt girl. You know, I, I don't want to stick out like that right there. You know, because people are going to come to you and say, well, why do you, why, why do you, you know, why, why do you, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? Hey, it's a commitment that she's made to God. This is for Jesus Christ. You see, it costs something to be sold out to the Lord. Say, so, well, all that stuff really doesn't matter. What matters is on what's on the inside. Yeah, it does matter what's on the inside. You see, we've got to be a new person. If I've been born again, I don't belong to the world anymore. 
You see, it costs something to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It costs something to be sold out. You see, that's why young ladies and young men, I want you to know, you don't need to date people who are not, who are not apostolic Christians. If they're, one, if they're a Facebook Christian and they're not a Christian on the inside, you don't need to date them. You don't need to marry them. You don't need to get mixed up with them. I'm going to pick on somebody a little bit. I don't have my glasses. Do you mind if I pick on you, Sister Carrie? There's something. Sister Carrie, she's a dear, sweet saint of God. And she's not perfect. And I, I can tell you that because I've been her pastor for almost 12 years now. I preached to her. Loved her. I knew there was an area in her life that wasn't exactly right. And some folks might say, well, pastor, you need to tell her she needs to get this right. Or she's going to go to hell. Nobody came to, nobody had guts enough if they were thinking that to come to me and say that. And she was in a relationship that was not right with God. Is it all right, Sister Kira? She came to me because she came to a crossroads in her life and she realized that if she was going to live for God and be sold out to Him, she was going to have to let that relationship go. Praise God. Because the person that she was in a relationship with was not willing to commit to Jesus Christ and sell out to the Lord. When Sister Carrie, when you came, and, and folks, how many of us have been in a relationship with somebody that we love, we care for deeply? You know, well, well the Lord really d doesn't expect uh, you know her to do that. You know, they could have still sort of dated and uh, and maybe this or that, and that eventually He would have come along. No, she said, if you're not going to, I want to go forward with the Lord. I'm sold out to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Sister Carrie, that did so much for me as a pastor to know that being patient and loving and kind and praying with, and I know none of us are perfect, and, 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 and hopefully you're not sitting there and saying, well, you know, I know this about Carrie. Hopefully you don't know anything about Carrie other than that she loves Jesus. Praise Amen. Amen.